New at 7, smooth start as phase 2 of public vaccination program begins. Hospitalizations from COVID-19 fall to 3 and active cases down to 223. Condolence book opened for Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. And Green Bay resident turns himself into police after wanted bulletin was issued on Tuesday. The details start right now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for the evening news here in ABS, the nation's news authority and the region's news leader. My name is Garfield Burford. And I'm Sequoia Servia. Thank you for joining us. There's been a smooth start to phase two of the public COVID-19 vaccination program as the government moves to achieve herd immunity in the shortest possible time. That's right, uh, Sequoia, because four sites are being used to administer the vaccines and what health experts say is a crucial step toward charting the recovery from the global pandemic. ABS's Jessica Russell visited two of those locations today and begins their coverage. I'm here at the Precision Center in Painters. It's being used as a site to administer COVID-19 vaccines. However, the day has been moving quite slowly, and so I took the opportunity to go ahead and get vaccinated. The Precision Center is among four sites being used in phase two of the country's COVID-19 vaccination campaign. This location replaces the Sonoval Riches Academy that was used in the first phase. Yeah, the vaccine already? No. Oh, yeah. Nurse Gretzine Qualis was working at the site and calmed my nerves before she administered my vaccine. She says people have been trickling in to get their Oxford AstraZeneca shot. Things have been pretty slow. Um, we are not accustomed to this sort of speed, slow, slowness. And um, so we are hoping that it will pick up as the hours pass by. She says younger people, however, are coming out to get vaccinated. We have been seeing more of the younger age group. I'm sure you would have known that um, previously in the first phase, we were looking at more of the 65 and over. So we are seeing more of the younger age group on the 65 so far. Two people on the 65 share why they decided to get the job. I'm a preschool teacher, and since the ministry has given the okay for preschools to be reopened, I think it would be best in my interest, my family, and the staff and the students. This woman says a family member was in contact with a person who died from the virus. I was frightened because. Um, my dad was in contact with somebody who recently died. So I was sent home from work just to be on the safe side. And then uh, we had to go and get tested, which I didn't like the feeling at all. <laughs> and uh, thanks God it came back negative. But I was worried. Meanwhile, at the multi-purpose cultural center, a range of age groups came out to get vaccinated. I take the vaccine because I don't want to uh, catch the COVID. However, it was not very busy when we arrived at about 11.30. For the day, we've done about 150. Um, it's not as overwhelming as it was in phase one in terms of the turnout today, but we believe as more people become aware that the centers have reopened, we will see an uptake in the numbers. Jessica Russell, ABS News. Jessica, all the vaccination sites open to the public are the Glanvilles and the, the Villa Polyclinics. While the country has received a thousand doses of Russia's Sputnik V vaccine, they are not yet in use, although the country has started phase two of the public vaccination program. It's left to the pharmaceutical council. We're discussing that with them right now. As a matter of fact, when I leave here, I intend to engage in some discussions on that because people are asking for the uh, Sputnik vaccine. Health Minister Sir Malwin Joseph says people's receptivity to the vaccine is a pleasant surprise. There are people who are actually saying that they prefer to get the Russian vaccine. It would be good to have the options, really. Um, but both vaccines are very good. Individuals would always want to make a choice. If we can give them a choice, it's even better. He says his ministry is also working to secure more vaccines. No later than the end of the month of May, we are guaranteed that we will get the additional 16,000 vaccines out from the COVAX facility. 
and hopefully before the end of May, we are having some very vigorous um, negotiations and discussions now. I am hoping that within this very month that we will be able to secure at least another 100,000 vaccines. And for clarity, the country is currently administering the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. However, Sir Malwin says the Russian vaccine may be among the additional doses are required because of the public's interest in the Sputnik V brand. The number of people in the hospital with COVID-19 has fallen to three, the lowest number in weeks. That's according to the health ministry, which says the condition of one of these individuals is severe, while the other two have mild infections. The dashboard also shows three new infections and nine new recoveries as of 6 p.m. on Monday, April 12th. The three new infections were confirmed following tests on a batch of 121 samples at Mount St. John's Medical Center. The net effect is that active cases have fallen to 223, while the country's case count is now 1,201. 947 people have recovered from the viral infection and deaths remain at 31. Well, two days into the return to face-to-face -face learning for students in Forms 4 and 5, ABS News has received a sanguine response from at least three principals. Our reporter Sherilyn Beezer has been gauging their reactions. Principals and students were pleased to resume face-to-face -face learning. Especially the Form 5 students who uh, they have upcoming exams and for them it's important that they get as much time as possible with their teachers. So our students were quite enthusiastic as well. They were very happy to be back out. Well, we found them to be very quiet and, um, well, give them a few days. With June just around the corner, the focus will be preparation for CSEC examination. Well, we will try our best to make them ready for CXC when CXC comes around. Oh, absolutely. All, all efforts will be focused on exam preparation. Um, practice, practice sessions with them, get, uh, focusing on uh, CXE past papers. Some teachers have started revision, doing past questions, and we'll be going through a full CXE exam, which is called the mock exams, looking at past papers and doing the paper one and paper two. The Caribbean Examinations Council has offered the opportunity for students who don't feel confident for the June sitting to defer to January or June 2022. ABS News will keep you abreast of undertakings in the nation's schools and directives from the Ministry of Education. I'm Sherilyn Beza reporting for ABS News. More students have been receiving laptop computers as the Board of Education continues distribution under its Laptops for Secondary Schools initiative. 109 third form students at the Antigua Girls High School received their devices today as we hear more from Sherilyn Beza. The focus of the distribution has changed from fourth and fifth form students to third formers. Because of the fact that school is now open to fourth and fifth form students, uh, to an extent that they're doing in-face, face-to-face learn, learning, uh, the focus will then be on um, the third form at this point in time as a matter of urgency. The board's information technology coordinator, Jem Lafrochere, says the distribution to third formers in all secondary schools is expected to be complete in two weeks. He says the second phase will see distribution to fourth and second formers. The IT coordinator says students are prohibited from downloading unauthorized content and software. He says there's also an initiative for laptop distribution to primary school teachers. We're trying to do it simultaneously that we can do the secondary schools um, and then uh, at the same time we're doing the primary school on the same days. Parents were on hand to collect the devices some accompanied by their children, who were pleased to receive them. It is going to assist a lot because um, there is a desktop at home. However, with the laptop, it provides some level of independence and so on. Um, there's, it's going to lessen the conflict in terms of time management and so on for she and her other siblings. I'm actually quite happy that we're getting the laptop because before the e-book, we didn't have a lot of access, so we couldn't do much things, and it was always just breaking down. You have to keep going ministry to fix it. So I'm very happy for the laptops. Plus, I could actually go to my live classes now. I feel good. I think it's a good thing because um, now she's more able to function, doing her schoolwork, whatever she needs to research. She now has what it requires to do all of that. I think it will um, 
But I assist me with my remote learning. Yes, we have a computer at home, but I use it quite often. So um, upgrading from the device that she had recently to the laptop is great. It's a bigger screen, obviously, and hopefully the laptop will have more capabilities than her device that she had earlier. I'm happy that we received the laptop because personally, when I was using the ebook, not all the time, it was reliable, like just different issues. So I have faith that this laptop will be much better and I'll be able to use it for online school. Laptop distribution to teachers and students continues Wednesday at Irene B. Williams and Pears Secondary. Sir McChesney George in Barbuda is slated for Friday with the primary schools scheduled for next week. Sherilyn Beza reporting for ABS News. Thanks, Sherilyn. Now, today marks 42 years since the 1979 eruption of the Lassifer volcano. And the anniversary was marked with another huge eruption today with ash and gases spewed miles into the air. Antiguans and Barbudans are being placed on notice as some of the ash could be carried on upper level winds to this country. The Met Office says there's a low chance of this happening between today and tomorrow. So has this started to happen yet? That's the million dollar question. So joining us this evening is meteorologist Orvin Page to walk us through these developments. Orvin, thank you so much for joining us early in the broadcast. What's the update? Has any sort of volcanic ash reached the Trinidad State yet? Thank you for joining. Thank you, and, and it's a pleasure to be with you, Garfield and Sequoia. And uh, we are monitoring the situation at La Soufre uh, in St. Vincent. Uh, this particular graphic shows you pretty nicely the ash cloud associated with the volcano and the boundaries within which that cloud has been moving. So far, the clouds have been moving pretty much towards the east and southeast and in the Atlantic Ocean. It has not come further towards the north, even though there has been some reports of uh, ash activity as far north as St. Lucia. The eruption captured on this particular graphic occurred somewhere between 6.30 this morning, and the pink areas would identify the heavier and more dense areas of where the ash is. Here we are in Antigua and Barbuda. Even though the surface winds would have shifted pretty much towards the southeast and would have given some indication of the possibility of this ash moving further towards the north. The middle and upper level winds continue to stream from west to east and, as we've seen, pushing bulk of the ash across Barbados and mostly into the open Atlantic. Garfield? Indeed. Uh, and Sequoia has a question as well for you as well, uh, Orban. Sure, Sequoia. Mr. Page, what, um, what advice do you have to residents of Antigua and Barbuda at this hour? Well, we do have to keep monitoring the situation in St. Vincent. Let me also mention that we saw some Sahara dust in the area. It is a time of the year when we see the advancing of such dust from the African region in the West African coast and across the Atlantic Ocean. And as we move further and closer towards the hurricane season and the commencement of the tropical waves coming across the Atlantic Ocean, we will likely see more of the Saharan dust. The Saharan dust will reduce air quality and make for some discomfort for those with respiratory ailments. But as far as the ash is concerned, it continues to be well south of Antigua and Barbuda. There is some dusty conditions. This is result resulting from Saharan dust and not the ash more specifically. Of course, uh, they might be a little bit difficult to make that demarcation between the Sahara dust and the ash from the volcano, it wouldn't it, would it be? Well, in terms of, well, we, we are not really experts in, in volcanology uh, at the Met Office, but insofar as uh, ash and dust conditions affect our weather conditions, we are trained to pretty much detect it. We are looking at Saharan dust, if we may get the graphic once again. Uh, we are looking at Saharan dust in the uh, more northern portion and in the vicinity of the northern islands to include Antigua and Barbuda. The volcanic ash is a different component and uh, just to lay or pretty much appease and allay fears, that ash continues to be well south of Antigua and Barbuda. We do have to monitor it because if we have any northward shifting in the mid and upper level winds, that ash cloud and ash components could move further towards the north, but that is not happening. We do have to maintain vigilance to see if that becomes an eventuality. Just to be clear, uh, Orvin, well, pardon the pun, if anybody would have seen any sort of film of dust on their car today, for example, that you're saying that's Sahara dust, not ash from, from last year. Yes, we do not have any evidence as of 
now that there has been an intrusion of ash from the Sufre volcano in, in St. Vincent into the vicinity of Antigua and Barbuda. We do have some dust from the Saharan region in our environment. This will also make for reduced air quality, but it is not, and I stress, not the ash from the volcano in St. Vincent. So far, as indications would suggest, we do have to monitor it because, once again, if the winds in the middle and upper levels particularly shift to a more northward component, then the ash could move further towards the north. As to how far north, it is still yet to be determined. All right. Thank you so much, Orwin. Really appreciate it. One to watch. Uh, uh, Sikwa, we're going to monitor that very, very closely indeed for you. West assured, uh, of course, Orwin will be back a bit later on. If anything changes between now and when Orwin returns for the full weather package, rest assured he'll provide that update. Let's stay with news about St. Vincent and the Grenadines because all health protocols will be implemented at Jolly Beach Resort when this country accommodates Vincentians displaced by the eruption of the last of volcano. That's the assurance from Health Minister Samalwin Joseph as the country prepares to accept some 250 individuals from the fellow OECS member state. The uh, Vincentians coming will have to be in quarantine for the 14 days. And those who have family connection in Antigua and Barbuda will be able to go to, see their, to stay with their families. If they um, do not have family connection, they will stay in the accommodation at Jolly Beach. Minister Joseph speaking with ABS's Ursula Charles Jr. last evening. And while a physical accommodation will be paramount, the health minister says the assistance will supersede providing just a bed. I will personally uh, be visiting um, Jolly Beach and looking at the, uh, the facility to be sure that not only do they have accommodation for sleeping, but they should have uh, recreational facilities as well. Uh, there, there is um, a potential for some psychosocial support that these individuals uh, will need. The minister says he expects some will require counseling services, which he and his team will be ready to provide. More news on St. Vincent because a 40-foot container of portable water left Antigua en route to St. Vincent last night. However, it is still uncertain when it will reach the volcano-stricken island. The update has come from Director of the National Office of Disaster Services, Philemore Mullen. That particular ship from Antigua go one of two routes, either Antigua Dominica St. Vincent or Antigua St. Kitts Dominica St. Vincent. I am not able to say which of the routes they're taking this time around. But the goods should get there sometime, I believe, tomorrow or by the weekend, certainly. Meanwhile, the University of the West Indies is mobilizing its resources and expertise to provide support and relief to people affected by the, volcan vo the volcanic eruption in St. Vincent. The University of the West Indies will activate a two-phase approach to, to the response in line with its traditional emergency assistance protocols. The first phase is a rapid response in the deployment of relief aid and experts to assist in the areas of greatest need in close coordination with the government of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines and its national emergency management organization, NEMO. The second phase concentrates on mobilizing expertise in the rehabilitation response. In this immediate phase, UWE encourages its staff, students, alumni, friends and partners to contribute financial resources. UE is prioritizing healthcare, education, and displaced students left vulnerable by the last Sufria volcano's eruption. People can give via, online, via UE Alumni Online donation platform at ue.edu slash alumni online slash rally round SVG. They can also donate directly to UE Open Campus US and EC Bank accounts to the American Foundation for the University of the West Indies and via text messages or check by mail. Vice Chancellor Professor Sir Hilary Beckles says the regional university is committed and ready to provide technical capacity and general support. In other news now, Antiguans and Barbudans are sending condolences to the British monarchy on the passing of Prince Philip, the husband of this nation's head of state, Queen Elizabeth II. NBS's Jessica Russell tells us how this is being done. A book of condolences has been opened here at Government House on the passing of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. The Governor General, his wife, Prime Minister, and the resident British High Commissioner were among the first to sign. Representative of this country's Head of State, Governor General, His Excellency Sir Ronnie Williams, was the first to write his sympathies. 
Prime Minister Garson Brown, Lady Williams, and resident British Commissioner Lindsay Thompson also wrote their words of solace. Private Secretary to the Governor General Anne Jonas says others will get a chance to write words of encouragement to the Queen. Because the Duke of Edinburgh had such an influence, particularly in the areas of youth development through the Duke of Edinburgh Award Scheme, we are inviting other members of the general public, including other members of cabinet, the members of the upper and lower houses of parliament, the members of the diplomatic corps, to sign this afternoon between 1 and 3 p.m. The general public will also get the opportunity to write in the book. From Wednesday up to Friday of this week, from 9 to 3.30 p.m., the members of the general public will be invited to be here as well. Her Majesty's Honours recipients and former Governors General will also sign. The book will then be sent to the Prince's widow, Queen Elizabeth, in May. Prince Philip died last Friday at age 99. Jessica Russell, ABS News. Thanks so much, Jessica. Of course, we'll follow that story closely for you as well. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll continue to track more of the national developments that we have been looking on and following for you, including this one. A Green Bay resident turns himself in after the police issued a wanted bulletin. Plus, a woman to be sentenced next week for her role in the 2018 robbery at Carlisle Bay. Those stories upcoming on the ABS Evening News on air and online. Please stay with us. At Nagico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long. But after all these years, you just can't let go. At Nagico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Open your wallet to endless possibilities with a contactless chip and pin credit card from the Eastern Caribbean Amalgamated Bank. Enjoy the flexibility of choice with our Visa Gold. Increase your purchasing power with Visa Platinum. Grow your business with Visa Business. Have luxury at your fingertips with Visa Infinite. The new eCab contactless chip and pin credit cards guarantee enhanced security and limitless rewards. Welcome to endless possibilities with the Eastern Caribbean Amalgamated Bank. Our future, our back. This week on Conversations, we feature meteorologist Mr. Philbert Mason. Join me on ABS TV every Wednesday at 8 p.m. for a different perspective on our people and their special lives in Conversations. Welcome back. Salim Harrigan of Green Bay has turned himself into police after a wanted bulletin was issued for him this morning. Police say Harrigan, who goes by the aliases Kareem or Chucky, surrendered around 1 this afternoon at the Langford's, uh, the Langford's police station, accompanied by his attorney. Law enforcers say he is a key suspect in several serious crimes and their investigations are continuing. Still on matters of crime and justice in this update on a story that we've been tracking closely. The former Carlisle Bay Resort employee who helped plan a robbery at the hotel in 2018 will be sentenced next Monday. Kathy Ann Isaac pleaded guilty to aggravated robbery on February 24 last year. However, Isaac later retained new, a, a new attorney and petitioned the court to vacate her plea. Her new lawyer, Wendell Robinson, successfully argued Isaac's former counsel did not properly advise her and her plea was not made voluntarily. Isaac then pleaded guilty to the alternate charge, conspiracy with intent to rob, on December 7 last year. Now, prosecutors say the defendant conspired with fugitive Anthony Thuglife Govaya to pull off the daring daylight heist on June 30, 2018. 
Now, during the incident, Isaac pretended to be a victim as a masked gunman, said to be Gavar, demanded that she and a co-worker fill bags of money amounting to over $60,000. Investigators say the Freeman's Village man took the money, then disappeared without a trace. If you have any information concerning the whereabouts of Anthony Thuglife Gavar, you are being asked to call the Criminal Investigations Department. Those numbers 462-3913 or 462-3914. Preparations continue for the United Nations Climate Change Conference, or COP26, and Antigua and Barbuda is ratcheting up the rhetoric to get the developed world to do more to cut carbon dioxide emissions. The event will take place in November this year in Glasgow, Scotland. The country's ambassador to the United States, Sir Ronald Sanders, was among panelists at a, at a recent seminar organized by the Institute of Commonwealth Studies on the grouping's path to COP26. Sir Ronald says the smallest states are most vulnerable to climate change. They contribute the least to the inimical emissions. The small states contribute less than 1% to the world's greenhouse gas emissions. But, alarmingly, those same countries are among the first to experience the worst and most devastating impacts of climate change with greater risks to their economies, their livelihoods, and to their food security. He further emphasizes that this information suggests that smaller states should play a more leading role in discussions on climate change and create practical programs backed, by, backed up by funding. He says the 54-member Commonwealth can play a greater role in the issue. The Commonwealth should give itself greater relevance and meaning by helping the world to negotiate on this issue. Well, there's fresh concern this evening that some children have easy access to alcohol. The concern comes as April is observed as Alcohol Awareness Month, bringing the many negative effects of alcohol abuse into focus. Kim Emanuel Beard recaps comments by the Director of Family and Social Services on Antigua Barbuda today. The Substance Use, Prevention, Assessment and Rehabilitation Center, SPARC, has been focusing on rehabilitation since 2019, with the primary focus on those under 18. Despite setbacks to their plans due to the pandemic, the center intends to play its part in tackling the issues of children's access to alcohol. Locally within our society, that we enforce the age of youth in terms of presenting identification if you go to a particular place in terms of purchasing. Uh, Richard says parents also need to be vigilant to notice changes in their children's behavior when suspecting alcohol or substance abuse. You may see um, drop in how they eat. You may see other issues in terms of their focus, in terms of what is it that they're doing as it relates to school. Are they focusing on school or suddenly declining their grades? Those are some things that would identify that there are some things happening with a child. She also encourages parents who have been affected by the pandemic to come into the Ministry of Social Transformation to see how they can be assisted. We are hoping that persons who are having those having challenges in terms of not working, in terms of in terms of not being able to afford their rent because they're no longer working, etc., that they will come forward and seek help within the department, within the Ministry of Social Transformation, because there are varying programs within the department that can assist them. This is Kim Emanuel Baird reporting for ABS News. Thanks, Kim. And on a programming note, upcoming at 8 o'clock, right after the ABS Evening News, another powerful edition of House Calls. Can you reduce your risk factors for cancer? What are those risk factors? What are the ones that you have control over? How can you actually change the things you can? Those questions will be answered by Dr. Hannibal Yazigi. He's a consultant medical oncologist. He'll be talking with us about risk factors for cancer at 8 o'clock on House Calls. Absolutely on, Monsieur. When we come back from this break, we'll turn our attention to news overseas. One of the stories that we're tracking for you is, of course, it's the 42nd anniversary of the 1979 eruption in St. Vincent. And last of four belches more ash and gases. We will give you a live update. And internationally, the defense has begun its case at Derek Chauvin's trial. Those stories upcoming on the ABS Evening News on air and online. Do stay with us.